Uh, tonight's lesson, tuning in to God's frequency. If you remember last week, we said uh, if you got a favorite radio station, hearing the voice of God is like tuning into a radio station. Amen? If you're coming into Cincinnati and you got a favorite radio station, maybe it's WGRR, which now seems to be more like WEBN. I'm going to play an Aerosmith on there, you know, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. It's not the oldies anymore, but uh, ACDCs is now yeah, the oldies, know. you know. I've got an old Larry, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. But with that, um, the, um, yeah, he's got the lessons over there. Uh, with that, the closer you get to that radio tower on your radio knob, the more the sound's going to come in. Amen? But the further away you get from it, the less the sound's going to come in. It's, it's, it's going to get staticky. It's the same way with the Word of God. The more time you're spending with God and Word and prayer around other Christians in church, the more clearly you're going to be able to hear exactly what it is he's, he's said to you. Now, there's been times in my life where I've said God told me to do this and I was wrong, but there's been many times in my life where I said God told me to do this and I was right. Amen? Amen. I went into a courtroom in Florida and said, Your Honor, the things I was found innocent of in Kentucky, I'm guilty with five years on the shelf. Why? Because God told me to. And he made it clear, and I did it, and you know how you know it, it was God? Because I didn't get the five years they had me dead to rights, you know? And so, if not, I wouldn't be here teaching today. That would have been uh, the end of me. But with that, um, the more time you spend with him, the more clear you're going to be able to hear him. Now, back in the day, like, I, I pulled this picture here of this, this radio. Now, this ain't a back in the day radio. Back in the day, the radios I had was on a TV. There was a TV and a wooden cabinet. And up top, there'd be a record player, maybe a liquor cabinet for some of you sinners out there. But they had that, and you'd have to get that knob and tune that station in. And even in them cars, the old cars, man, they'd have the knob. You'd have to tune in that station. They had the pull tab thing. There wasn't no button, channel one, channel two. You'd have to tune that knob in. But sometimes you'd be going down the road. You'd have it tuned in, and that knob pushed for your favorite station. Those little, those little buttons, y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But sometimes you'd get a little bit away, and it'd start getting a little bit staticky, and you'd have to readjust that knob a little bit. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Sometimes it'd be programmed in just right, but then it'd just start getting <laughs> staticky because it moved a little bit. So you'd have to readjust it. It's the same thing with the Word of God. Sometimes, and we got them tuned in, but sometimes it gets a little staticky. You get, you get away from it. So that's why I put this radio up here just to kind of remind you. we got to tune into that frequency. Sometimes hearing the voice of the Lord is, is very, very hard and very, very challenging. Anybody ever been there feels like your prayers are hidden in the ceiling? Yes. But other times he's talking so much you wish he wasn't talking to you. Because he's like, hey, you need to deal with this. You know, I'm like, I'm going to change the station, Lord. I'm gonna, you know, that. But no matter where you go, there he is. And so with that, uh, that's, that's, that's what it's like hearing the voice of God. But see, uh, why is this important? Why do we need to be tuned in to the voice of God? Because... You don't want to miss out on something, man. If God says something, I want to know it. Amen? Uh, man, I spent enough of my life with my head up in the clouds thinking one thing was a reality only to find out it wasn't, man. I was a full-blown alcoholic and regular drug user, man. I thought the government was the problem. I thought my parents were the problem. My wife was the problem. I even thought you people in the church were the problem. I didn't even know you guys then, you know? I'm still on the fence about some of y'all. So we're going to lie, you know, with that. You know, God's working that out. But here's the deal, man. I thought something was reality, but it wasn't. And so I don't want to miss out on something. If there's something happening, I want to know. I like being in the know. Even if being in the know causes me heartache and trouble, I want to know. I'd rather know than not know. Amen? So you don't want to miss out on this. Now check this out. Now here's the cool thing. This is uh, Hebrews 1.11. It says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times, and in what? Many various ways. Uh, that's in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. So I like that. It lets me know that God is not restricted to speaking to you just through the Bible or just through prayer or just through uh, that still, small voice. Man, he can talk to you in any way and every way because he's God. If God created us, he didn't just hit the button and walk away. He would want to communicate with his parents. The Bible says if you all being parents know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more so will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He's like, if any of your kids ask for a piece of bread, you're going to give them a serpent, you know, or what have you, or a fish, you're going to give them a scorpion? No. Well, God is the perfect gift. And so if you're a good parent, you want to spend time with your kids. You want to hear what they're talking about. You want to hear about their day. Amen, somebody? Amen. My kid starts coming in telling me about her day, and, man, a lot of it is just very, very, I'm like, man, I'm not a 17-year-old little girl, man. This, this is, you know, Susie said this, and Tammy's doing this. I'm like, I don't want to know that stuff, but I'm like, tell me more. 
You know, because I want to know what's going on in my kid's life, man. I want to communicate with her. And if she goes away to the weekend to her mom's house, I'm sad because I haven't got to communicate with her on the quantity or the quality that we have communicated with throughout the week. Amen? And so if God is so much a better parent than us, don't you think he would have left ways to communicate with us? Amen? So God wants to communicate with us. He has all kinds of ways of communicating over this week, and next week we're going to look at some of these weeks or these ways. But with that, um, the thing you need to understand before we go through is, and I'm going to be asking for testimonies tonight on these after we get past the first uh, three here. But um, with that, um, if God's talking, I want to hear it. And uh, But some of these ways of hearing God are more accurate than others. We can be like, because uh, whenever God speaks, whenever God speaks, the word of God speaks, uh, it's inerrant. It's infallible. We learned that last week. There's no way God can tell you something that doesn't correspond to reality. Amen? He's not going to say it's not raining outside when it is raining outside. Amen? Right. Whatever God says, it's going to correspond to reality, and it's going to be a truthful statement. Furthermore, whatever he says, it's impossible for it not to deliver on the things it says it would deliver on. Amen? So when it comes from God, when it comes down from heaven, and uh, it's always coming down from heaven, the same way the radio station is constantly sending out a broadcast, whether you could, if, if you're 200 miles out of Cincinnati, you're not going to be able to hear WGRR, oldies 103.5. But let me ask you this, is WGRR still broadcasting even though you can't hear it? Yes. Amen? It's the same thing with the Word of God. He never stops broadcasting, and he's not restricted to one station either. However... <laughs> The problem is, is that we are involved in the interpretation process. Amen? It's, it's, it's inerrant. It's perfect when God sets it down. But somewhere in those radio waves, we get involved in this, and that's where things get a little bit hinky. Amen, somebody? Uh, God will say, uh, don't do it. It's a mistake. You know, and you hear, hey, God said we're having steak. Amen, somebody? <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. And we don't, did you say steak, Lord? You know, yeah, you know. So with that, um, I want to show, I've, I've broken these 30 different ways that God speaks us down into three separate categories. Uh, the first three are what I call 100% accurate ways of communication. There's no way when it's here that they're going to be um, with error or wrong. The second way would be primary ways of communication. Uh, that would be numbers four through uh, nine on this list. And if you're at home and watching and you'd like me to send you a copy of this, uh, shoot me an email, I'll, I'll get you one. Um, then uh, we have secondary ways of communications, 10 through 23. And then we have supernatural ways of communication. So we're going to get into those uh, tonight and the next week. But let's look at the 100% uh, accurate ways first. As I said, uh, oh, I'm sorry, <coughs> I got one more verse. Why do, we, um, why do we need to learn all these different ways? Because, what I just said, for God speaks in one way and in two, or in 30, though man does not perceive it. Amen? This is why we want to know the different ways that God speaks to us. So we're going to look at the different ways that he's talked to people in the past, in the Bible, in the testimony of Scripture, because in that, he still talks to us the same way today. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at that. So let's uh, look at the 100% accurate ways of communication. The first way that God speaks to us, we covered last week, and that's through his word. It says that all scripture, not some of it, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and for profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for what? Instruction. For instruction. He is instructing you. He is talking to you. He is communicating his will, his way, his preferences through his word. Not just some of the word, not just the ones you like. Amen, somebody? Amen. Through all of it. Oh, even the, you know, even Leviticus, amen, that's everybody's favorite book in the Bible, you know. All scripture is given by inspiration of God for instruction. So, when God says it, we learned last week, I'm not going to cover it again, uh, I've said enough about it tonight, but it's without error. It's without error, and there's no way it cannot do what it says it's going to do. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Good. So, we know that that's, that's above reproach, so I sift everything I do through the word of God. Another 100% accurate way of communication that God speaks to us is through his son, Jesus Christ. And Hebrews 1, we just read Hebrews 1, 1, but we're going to look at 1 and 2 now. It says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, and at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made 
the universe. So if Jesus is saying something to you, Jesus is the Word. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Jesus is the Word. He is the Word of God manifest in the flesh. And so the Word of God, the Bible, is without error. The Word of God and the Son in the flesh is without error. If Jesus says something to you, if Jesus says something to you, it's 100% accurate. But, you know, the problem is, is when he says it, it leaves his lips perfect. But like, the, I, I, you're making a mistake. Did you say steak? There's a disconnect. There can definitely be a disconnect in what we hear because the Bible says we are drawn away and enticed by our own sinful desires that we may use it on ourselves. So when God says it, it's without error. Uh, if there's ever a time in the Bible or, you know, God has said something that you should be experiencing something, walking in something, living in something, and you're not, then that disconnect is always with you and never with the Word of God or Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen somebody? You're just missing it. Maybe you just haven't arrived yet, but we're all a work in progress. Amen? Amen. That's what the Gospel of Alan Jackson says. I'm a work in progress. Amen? <laughs> so with that, God speaks through His Son, Jesus Christ, 100% accurate way, but then it's like them old tin cans, you know, when it gets to us, maybe we don't hear it right. Um, but when it, it's not the air is not on His end. Third and final way, 100% accurate way that uh, you can know that what you're hearing from God is through the Holy Spirit. It says, however, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Amen? Yeah. These are all communication terms. He's, he's, he's going to speak. He's going to hear. He's going to tell you things to come. You're going to get insider trading information. Amen? That's how, you know, it may be illegal on Wall Street, you know, but it ain't illegal on us. We got the book that says, hey, here's the end. Look at Revelation. This is yeah. what's going to happen. But if you get on this side of the fence, you're cool. We have insider information. The Holy Spirit tells us things. Not only does he remind us of the things with which Jesus has said, but he does deeper because there are layers to the words of God. That's why it's called the living word. He'll bring something out of that thing that, you know, you've read it a hundred times, and today it says something completely different because it's the living, breathing word of God. So with that... Um, we're going to look at some primary ways, but these ways are accurate. There's nothing wrong with any of these three ways until they, and once they leave his lips, they're good. But the second it hits our ears and our involvement in it and our hearts, that's where the disconnects start happening. People have went over to war. War sister, look at the Crusades. Amen. The church said, God wants us to win this back. At one point, they sent these children saying, well, God can deliver David from Goliath. And they sent a bunch of nine-year-olds, 12-year-olds over there, and they were slaughtered. Yeah. Amen? Because God told them to do it. God didn't tell you to do that, you know? You wanted to do that, you know? So right. with that, it's important. It's never wrong when it comes from God, just when we catch it. That's where it's at. What do you got, Wayne? We're all here today because before we knew any of this... Lisa, you know, hand over on him, would you? We're all here today because we heard the Holy Spirit convict us. We yeah. felt that conviction just when we first come in contact with the Holy Spirit. Whether we obeyed that or not, that was up to us. But that was the first time that we ever heard the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Now, do you need a, um, a Bible degree, a pastorate's degree to hear from God? No. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, I can't tell you how many times people in this room have come up to me and said, uh, God told me this, God told me that. I was struggling with something. And <laughs> I got a card in the mail from Phyllis, and uh, I was just really struggling with it. And I, <laughs> I opened up the card, and it said, let it go. And that was it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Lord. You know, yeah, so she got me. And so God lays things on your heart. He speaks to you. So what I want to do now is uh, I want to look at some of the ways, the primary ways of communication. These are not 100% accurate ways uh, because, again, not on God's end, but the second we get involved in it. So let's start with primary ways of communication. Now, prayer is a uh, primary way of communication. It is one of the ways that God speaks to us. Um, the Lord told me I was where to find Lisa. Uh, I, he's like, you're going to find your future wife in this Emmaus community a year before I ever laid eyes on her. One, now see, I got a thing that when God tells me something, I think He means next week. You know, so I was pretty disappointed when, like a year later, and I'm just about given up. You know, then there she was. You know, when I finally stopped trying to. You know, yeah. You, I hope that don't ever happen to you guys because, man, every church service you can't focus. Amen. You're sitting there, you know, praying. 
you know, uh, how great is our God. Is that her? You know, you know. <laughs> Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, I hope that's not her. You know? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And she's over there praying too. I hope that's not him. You know? yeah. But with that, uh, God does speak through prayer. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're learning, denying yourself, spending time in the, in the Word of God. See, in order to know what God's saying, you have to know what He has said. Amen. The more time you spend in the Word, the more you get to hear in that voice. It starts firing in all these other different methods. So with that, um, God speaks through prayer. The Bible says, the testimony of Scripture says, Call to me, and I will answer you. That's not up for negotiation. That is a promise. You call to me, and I'm going to answer you. I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you've done, who you've been with. Or you call. Year, or a year later. Yeah, or a year later, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't say. Yeah, he'd say right away. You know, well, with Daniel, Daniel prayed. You know, but twenty-one days later, the, the, the answer comes as soon as you get it. But sometimes it takes a while to get to you. Yes. You know, yes. so call me and I'll answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. So let me ask: Is there anybody in this room? I'd like to know a specific time that God has spoken to you in prayer and it's come to pass. Joyce. Yeah, when uh, Mark was so bad. And I just laid down in bed, and I said, I can't stand this. I mean, I, I just, I, I couldn't pray because the words wouldn't come. The only thing I could say was, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Yes. And uh, he did, I'm not saying God said this, but he said, uh, Mark will be okay, but you're going to have to suffer a little longer. That's what I heard. Yeah. That's all right. I believe you. Yeah. Because yeah. it came to pass. It came to pass. Amen. And you yeah. know he's okay now. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Had, had a, everybody knows Marco. Uh, he was out there still in his mess. And man, it's, it's, I've been the guy on both sides of that fence where I was the one causing the parents and the friends and the loved ones the heartache. But I've also been the one where I've worried about people. You know, mm -hmm. like they're out there doing this and stuff. So yeah, that's great. So he spoke. Yes. Anybody else want to jump in on there on that? Brian, what do you got? Got two of them, if I may. No, you only get one now. And I'm just like, <laughs> you can have, you can have two time. slices. You can have two slices. <laughs> what do you got, Mike? Uh, years ago, one of my best friends, he married my cousin, and she had two miscarriages. And I was just praying. And I had just gotten saved probably for a couple of years, and uh, I just prayed, Lord, you know, he'd be a great father, and I know she'd be a great mother. He said, okay. So after two miscarriages. She, I ended up calling them and saying, "Hey, you're going to have a child this time," and they did. So that what that did for me too is it kicked my faith upstairs. You know, because when your faith is kind of shaky, and then God prays it, kind of gives you something, and then it happens, you're like, "Oh, okay, this is I like this game." And then uh, with Paula, of course, uh, we prayed that yes, Paula's tumor was a big deal. Yes, it was. And now it's uh, it has not shown any sign of growth in a year. Yeah. And now, God, now it's and God told us back then. We would go into the doctor and say, Paul is going to be the poster child for the success of this operation. And we told him that from day one. And I know he thought we were kidding, but we were not. Amen. Good. All right, let's, uh, let's jump on another one. God speaks to us through prayer. Call me and I'll answer you. God speaks to us through preachers and their sermons, so you all better be paying attention. Amen, somebody? God speaks, even the dry ones. Amen, somebody? You know, I've, I've sat under some dry ones, not anybody here, of course. But with that, uh, you know, I've, I've been there, went here and went there, man, and, and it's like, man. You know, but what I had to do is, uh, there's a phrase that's like nails on a chalkboard to me. If you say this to me, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Well, uh, I, I just don't get fed there. I want to lay holy hands on people when they say that, like the guy did with Ray Charles earlier. Amen, somebody? Uh, because with that, the pastor's job, the preacher's job, is not to feed you. That's your job. Amen, somebody? Right. It says in the Bible that you're still in need of, of milk when you should be on the meat and potatoes here, you know? We should be teachers of the word by right. now. And so... Here's the deal. If you are someplace and the Word of God, even a couple scriptures, is being preached, then the problem's not with your mouth. It's with your ears. Amen, somebody? And so with that, God speaks to us through preachers and sermons. And so I've sat under some dry sermons in my time, man. I've, I've uh, you know, and I've been the one that's given some dry sermons at the time. But what you got to do is you get out that notepad and you start writing. Amen? Anytime that anything even remotely raises an eyebrow at you or there's a scripture, write it down. Write it down. If the word of God's there, I promise he'll meet you that way. Amen, somebody? Amen. That one's free. The next tip will cost you. 
with that. God speaks through preachers and their sermons. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in, and how can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Notice the word hear again right there. How can they hear without someone preaching to them? So through the preaching to them is God speaking to you. Amen? Yes. The question is, is do we have eyes to see and ears to hear? Let me ask you this. Have you ever been setting in on a message somewhere? A small group, a Sunday morning service. Can I get a testimony on this to where God has spoken through you through a sermon? Bob. I know when Karen and I first started coming here and I was used to a certain type of preaching, um, I didn't necessarily right away catch on to Pastor Scott's way of preaching. Yeah. Um, it kind of was like sandpaper to me and I was just, I didn't. Go ahead. I want to pause you right there. I want you to look at the camera and apologize. Right I, I'm sorry, Pastor. You know I love you now. Yeah, you know. gonna, I mean, I'll fix your heat, here. but I love you. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and the Lord, I just felt him speaking to my soul, going, you know, you need to pay more attention to the message and less than to the messenger. Amen. And uh, so it doesn't really matter who's giving the message. You need to listen to the message, not the messenger. That's right. Hey, I'll turn that camera back over. Yeah. Yeah. And for the record, Daddy, uh, Bob Tinker was very worldly when he came in here. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was and, yeah, the gospel is foolishness slidding. to those who are perishing and don't understand. It. So, with that, you know, who else? That's good though. Who else? But he, he got a message today. Who who has gotten a specific word from um, the message preaching teaching? Anybody? I don't know how many times that I've been to the, I've been to the back door, and after preaching a sermon, and. Somebody has stopped and said, do you realize you were speaking right to me today? Yep. And that hit me. And they, they would tell me all the things I was preaching about. And I'm thinking, I don't remember preaching about any of that. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But the Lord, the Holy Spirit, it's the foolishness of preaching. Yes. You know, God used me in some way, somehow, yeah. to communicate to those individuals about the need that they had or a solution. You know, mm -hmm. so God does speak through sermons. Yes, he absolutely does. Uh, I remember the first time I came to Cuff First and Larry was preaching. I never met him before, you know. He didn't know me from Adam, and he's up there in the front, and I'm in the back, and he starts preaching. It's like he knew everything I'd ever done. I thought, did my dad call this guy and tell him I was coming? <laughs> what, what is all this, man? And the Holy Spirit spoke through me, man. Uh, the Lord let me know through some sermons here that I was supposed to resign to finish this book, you know. He let me know uh, little things about how to identify my future wife in the Emmaus community when I see her, you know. And so if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, a humble humbleness and a teachable spirit you'll hear amen, amen. are you hungry amen because the bible says what's the bible say about hunger and thirst wayne we shall be filled they shall be filled amen yeah, right. blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they shall be filled that is yeah. a promise you can take to the bank yeah. all right so god speaks through preachers and their sermons um i'm just gonna lisa if you could just make a note that not a single person said well pastor chuck last week's lesson was a, <laughs> yeah. a godsend you know but that's, that's okay you know hey, we'll, chuck. Had to take it up an octave next time, Wayne. I have two things that happened to me. One to me uh, when I first became a Christian, and later when I invited somebody to church. Mm -hmm. So the first thing happened: I was a young Christian, and I was going some through the doubting and situation. You know, how does this all work out? You know, I was just having the, having some struggles. Mm -hmm. You know, with some things. You know, coming out of the world. You know, this is all new to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember that the, I forget, I think, I guess it must have been Brother Little was preaching and they always give an altar call. Yes. Back in the, you know, back, back in the day, you know. So anyway, I didn't, I didn't go. I wasn't obedient. So God would deal with my heart and I didn't go. So I remember after they prayed and was get ready to leave the church, I turned out of my pew and God spoke to me so clearly. He said, if you'd have went, I'd have taken it away. Just as clear and plain as it could be. Amen. I hadn't been a Christian, gee, no, yeah. probably months at that point. Yeah. But then on the other hand, uh, back up first, when Barb and I invited her sister Betty, Betty Cooper, you know, you know here, you know, she comes here, of course, she came down. She's, yeah. you know, she, anyway, uh, shut in. So anyway, after one service, Chris Sutherland was preaching. And so after the service, Betty came up to me and said, did you tell him about me? 
<laughs> oh my God, just opened, you know. She thought I was talk, talking to, to the pastor. Yeah, yeah the pastor. No, nope, that's called the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's your own yeah. 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 I do, the, the series you did on Beta Satan did kick me in my teeth. I mean, that opened my eyes to more things yeah. in my life that was going wrong, that was my fault, and it was, it was. Yeah. I had it turned around, and that, that really opened my eyes. He's yeah, talking to about uh, offense. The bait of Satan, John yeah. LeVere, is talking about taking the bait. Anytime there's a uh, a trap, it needs to have two things. It needs to have bait, and it needs to be camouflaged. And then that's what yeah. is involved in a trap. And the bait that Satan uses is offense, because oftentimes our self-rights have been infringed on, and we, we take that bait, well, I, you, I've done this, and I've done that, and they didn't do this, and they didn't do that. But the thing is, is it's, it's camouflaged because... If you've given your heart to Jesus, then you've given away all your self-rights. They didn't do it to you. They did it to him. And so, but we take that bait, and once we do, the trap is sprung, you know. Right. And so, uh, Wayne brought up a thing there with uh, answering the altar call, just feeling the tugging of the Spirit through the message, through the altar call or whatever, um, and, and and he didn't go. Uh, now, I had, a, I had the flip side of the coin where I was feeling a tug, and it wasn't the Lord. Uh, when we were at Cub first, uh, they had some baptisms up there. I'd already been baptized by Larry. And we had a, a, a thing, and, and man, just something in my, I, I just felt like, man, I, I need to be baptized again. I need to be baptized again. Because I was leaning on my, my feelings. I didn't feel saved. Amen? Mm -hmm. When I should have been leaning on my faith. Amen. You know, and that Bible says that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, and you know, be saved and take them and baptize them. I was cool. But I didn't feel it, so I was leaning heavy on it. And so I went up there and I got baptized again. You know, years later, I'm like, man, that was stupid. You know, I, I didn't need to do that. That was unnecessary. I should have just believed it. And moved on with it, you know. And so, but with that, uh, sometimes you could think you're hearing from the Lord, but or from a preaching or from a sermon, but that ain't from the thing. Now, on Wayne's end, it, it was. He heard right on my end. I heard wrong. Amen. It's very easy to do. See, again, when it comes down from on high, it's right. Yes. But man, when we get involved in this, it starts becoming less reliable. And then once again, that's why we need the Word of God to measure and sift it through. Amen. Let's move on to the next one. God speaks to us through other believers, not just the pastors, amen? Not just the priest, not just the uh, board members or the small group leaders, through any and all believers. Now, why, I like this. This is, uh, this is Paul here, after Paul had lost his sight on the Damascus Road there, um, and uh, the, he sends this guy, Ananias, to, to heal him. Now, watch this. It says, uh, so Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul... The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me. Amen? If God sent him, that means God spoke to him and told him what to do. First of all, he told him about this situation on the road that he wasn't even around for. Amen? So that shows you right there that God speaks through other believers. God has sent me so that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly. Something like uh, scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight and then he got up and was baptized. Once, not twice. Amen, somebody? <laughs> With that, God sends other people to you. Has anyone here ever had um, a brother or sister at the right time? Kelly, just come by and give you a, a word from the Lord. Today. Today. Amen. I went to the eye doctor yesterday, and I'm supposed to be here. Thanks, Tina. Today, I wasn't coming because I went to the eye doctor yesterday, and I got some really crappy news. Um... I could use all your prayers. They said I'm starting macular degeneration in my right eye. And I'm talking to Tina, just said whatever I said, pity party, whatever. And she says, but aren't you glad you have insurance? And aren't you glad you have money in the bank? And aren't you, you know, and just lifting me up. Amen. And I said, yeah. I said, and I'm going to get out of my car now. And I'm coming to church. <laughs> so, Amen, I read this scripture. Amen. Why am I supposed to be here? Amen. Thanks, Tina. Yeah, thank you, Tina. Yeah. Give me the Bible. Hubert. Uh, I can remember, and even today, uh, I was assured of the, and then the protection that the Lord gives you. You know it, it's, it's from Him. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, we were at a foreign country, and uh, and with a group of uh, from from Kentucky here, and 
Marie and I, uh, uh, I, Marie, she violated one of the, the laws. Mm -hmm. We wasn't uh, 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 be able to, to uh, exchange money because they're getting ready to grab your bill for and take off. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is all the people, all of you stay together. Yeah. Don't go out. So we were eating at dinner and uh, Marie said, uh, she, she went out the door and I was standing on the other side of the door. Mm -hmm. I said, Marie, where are you going? She said, I'm going over at this jewelry store. And I'm I'm going over and, and uh, buy some stuff. So look at it. I said, you know, you don't supposed to do that. I know, but I'm going over there. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, I I looked down the down the road there. There was three big guys, about like Wayne here and his brother. And and. Uh, and they were doing like this, yeah. pointing out to Marie. Mm -hmm. And they started rushing to get up there mm -hmm. in that store. And uh, and I took off across, across the pathway and went in right behind them. And uh, they got me in a corner, three big men did. And they said, exchange money. I said, no. Ex exchange money? No. I, I looked, and this one guy had uh, had cut one of the ladies' bags she had with her mm -hmm. in two, and, and all the the uh, in, things that was inside come falling out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, Marie, and she looked at me. I said, Come here, get up, get behind me. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm looking at some stuff over here. <laughs> I said, Marie, get over here and get behind me. And uh, she knew I was, I was uh, meant to it. But anyway, uh, we we uh, got, I got the, those ladies over behind me. And this guy, big old guy, come up and stuck his, his fist right under my nose without touching it. And, and he said something, I don't know, uh, probably the curse word I might have hit back, but I didn't know what he meant. And um, they turned around, walked out, out of the, the store, and I ran over to the door. I never seen three guys in all of my life running as fast as they could down this, uh, where we were we at. I mean, they they were just as just as fast, and then people. I've had a lot of people say, "Well, Hubert, the Lord was with you." Well, I can <clears throat> agree with them a lot of ways, uh, uh, but uh, I want a clear vision that God uh, He wanted me to do what I did, Amen. and uh, uh, that. That's about the end of that. So God, God not only speaks through believers, but He speaks through your husbands too, ladies. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm paying attention. Hey, uh, James, James Brooks, he's behind you, Lisa. James Brooks, has uh, God ever spoke to you through another believer? Don't you say no. <laughs> I'm sure, can you turn that thing on? Here, I'll turn the camera on. Uh, I can't uh, see. Go ahead, James. The world is listening. Yeah, I mean... God spoke to me in every one of these ways, you know, if it, if I slow down and pay attention. But a lot of times, you know, it's things I don't want to hear, so I try to change the channel. Like, oh, no, that's not, that can't be what he's saying. It's not, I don't see that working. But, you know, there were some specific times in my life, you know, that, that God's told me, you know, or that I've asked God, and you know, like in prayer, like I pray, God, you know, while I'm locked up, you know, them foxhole prayers, you know, don't let nothing happen to my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, and lo and behold, you know, they was fine while I was locked up. You know, my mother's still here. My dad, you know, he didn't pass away until I was free. You know, so he answered that prayer, you know, and I wasn't nothing but a, you know, inmate at that time, you know, but he didn't see that way, you know, and then, you know, people telling me my whole life, like, hey, 
God's got a message for you. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it's hard to believe, you know, from someone who, who's never heard it, you know, it's like, really? God's got a message for me? Like, yeah, right. You know, yeah. he cares about me, you know. And then when it comes to pass, it's like, oh, hey, I better slow down. And then, you know, when you told me the other day that you got a uh, – eulogy for somebody i say hey if he gives you mine don't don't tell me like i want to hear about it so i, I trust and believe that you hear from him too amen so just so as long as it's documented on youtube that's what <laughs> I, I was right amen yeah sometimes uh anybody ever has somebody come up to you like i got a word from the lord from you man you're like what seriously you know and then you know yeah sometimes man i get the lord gives me some words buddy you know but i've had some people come to me i'm like there's no way that was from the lord and some of that stuff when i was a younger christian people come up and say uh I had a leader uh, in Teen Challenge. Uh, my, um, my daughter was up here. I'm 1,200 miles away from my kid. I've been gone for almost uh, two years at this point. And a leader come up, and he's like, I feel like God wants you to do uh, the Emerging Leader Program in Teen Challenge, like a week before graduation. I'm like, are you serious right now? And I'm like, no. And I was like, man, I'll pray about it, you know, because I was taught if a leader tells you something, it's come from God to the leader, this and that. And, uh, but then I went through the scripture. I'm like, no, 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 man. That's, that's not what it says. It says that a, uh, you know, believer, uh, a man that doesn't provide for his family is, is worse than an unbeliever is what it says. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm sorry, man. You heard that wrong. You know, mm -hmm. so he had a word, but that word wasn't from the Lord. You know, he just saw some improvement in me. He's like, hey, you're doing good. You should do this. I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> so I've been here long enough. That's it. Uh, so God speaks through other believers, but you got to know that what you're hearing is through that. Uh, God speaks through nature. He speaks to us through nature and all of God's creation. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim his handiwork. Uh, I don't know if anyone's ever been like out to sea. Uh, anybody ever been like out on a like, deep sea? You know, uh, man, you just look all the way out at the ocean. It just it doesn't end. You know, and you're like, man, I'm just a drop of water in this bucket, man. You know, and just it, it speaks to you or a spring or a, a mountain morning or something like that. I know apparently that uh, God speaks through the Smoky Mountains to Wayne Helton because he's missing church all the time to go down there, you know. He's so. all over that place. Yeah. Has, uh, has God ever spoken to anybody through uh, creation? Anybody? I said every morning, you all see some of the sunrises I see. Yeah, amen. Unbelievable. And sunsets. Amen. Man, I tell you. And, and uh, a bird, uh, just this morning, I cannot understand how one little bird can lead a whole flock of them, and they can make right. signs. They can make signs in the skies, and you think of a cloud coming, mm -hmm. and they can stick together and turn all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking only God could create something like that. Really? It's, just, it's just amazing how that happens. Uh, Even before I was a Christian, I knew yeah. there was a God. Yeah. 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 My father is not a, uh, a follower, or uh, he's not a, fo a follower. He's a believer. He's just not a follower. You know, and so like he's like, I don't see how anybody. Now, he's not. He, he doesn't have a relationship. Jesus is not his Lord and Savior. But he's like, I don't look up, see how anybody can look out the window and think that there's not a God. The world looks at creation, and they see God. And he can speak through it too. Uh, anybody take it as a sign from God when you see a Kentucky Cardinal? Anybody? Like everything's gonna be all right, Phyllis. Uh, the deer is the thing for me. Uh, I was going through a rough time, and uh, the the Psalm, I think it's Psalm 40, where it says, you know. Uh, as the deer for the heart pants for water, so my soul pants for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I was like, I want to be that deer. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was going through something. And I was driving down the road. I'm not making this up. I'm driving down the road. I'm listening to Christian talk radio. And I got this thing where I could put on my my, uh, my deal, the Bible. Um, not the Bible gateway. It's the Daily Bread devotional. And so I'm listening to all my stereo. And that's the verse. It's mm -hmm. talking about the deer. You know, the deer. And then I pull up in my yard, and I put it in park. And, like, they'll be right there, but you won't see them until they move. Mm -hmm. And there's three deer right there in my front yard, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just took the Lord saying, son, you are the deer, mm -hmm. you know. I'm like, yes, yeah. you know. And so I want to be that deer, you know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my spirit animal there. Mm -hmm. So God speaks through nature and creation. Let's go to number eight here on the other side. Uh, yeah, we'll probably do this one and, and, and number nine, and we'll call it a night. Um, with some closing remarks here on this, and then we'll pick back up next week. Uh, God speaks to us through Christian literature. Uh, the Bible says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. Notice that by hearing it, by writing it down, the person who hears it is empowered. They are fueled. They go. 
Uh, has anybody here ever had a word spoken to them through Christian literature? Anybody got an example? Terry, uh, you read somebody's book lately, or did that uh, speak to you in any way, shape, or form? ASAP Recovery, Tearing yeah. Out the Old Foundation? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a small group right now on this book I read. And uh, Terry come in, and she said, man, the Lord really spoke to me on this deal, you know. And uh, I think Brian was saying something today. He's like, hey, man. Uh, you mentioned these four ways to identify who's who, and I really appreciate you guys helping me go through this book, those of you I've asked, and just give me some feedback before we publish and this and that. It's, it's coming, people. Uh, but with that, uh, Christian literature speaks to us. Um, let me ask you this. Has uh, God ever spoke to anybody through this book right here? Sure. The Purpose Driven yeah. Life, man. Uh, how many? Over 30 million sold worldwide, and this is an old book, probably printed like 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, 30 million, 50 million of these have been sold yes. mm. for a reason. Now, with this one, I read it in Teen Challenge when I was uh, recently sober and saved, and, man, it just it just knocked my socks off. And As a matter of fact, uh, Tracy, I want you to have this book. Thank this you. book changed my life. Thank Next you. to the Bible. It's, 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 it's dessert, though. It's not the main meal. Amen, somebody? <laughs> the Bible's the main meal. Then that's dessert. But that book changed my life. It spoke to me. And it, uh, it spoke to me. Now, I think every Christian believer should read that book. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. That's right. So God does speak through Christian literature. Uh, yes. Joyce Myers, Battlefield of the Mind. Yes. Amen. Me and uh, my big mouth. You, you and your big mouth? Me and my big mouth. Is that a name of a book? Or are you, yes. just, are you, are you making a statement of fact? What, what are we talking here? <laughs> hey, the Holy Spirit yeah, the Holy Spirit's telling me if you all can make a wall here when we discuss for me to get out. I'll just I'll pick up my yeah. laptop tomorrow. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Anybody else? God ever spoke to you through uh, Christian literature? Well, what about you, buddy? You're, God speaks to you through Christian books, right? Just stand behind you, Bert. Stand behind you, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's a walking Bible. Yeah. Amen. Good. I can't tell you all the time. You know, every time I pick up a book, God always speaks. I can't remember all of them, but all yeah. the time. Amen. All the time. Amen. Yes. Here, I got this book that ain't even Christian. It's anti-Christian. And, uh, man, he speak to me through this. It doesn't have to be even necessary. I mean, Christian literature, yes. But, man, really, God should be able to speak to you through anything and everything. The question mm -hmm. is, is, are you listening? All the time. What, what they used to say with the, uh, the Dukes of Hazard, you know, come in, Duke and Duke, you got your ears on? You know, that's what they used to say, you know. If you got your ears on, man, you know, you're good. Anything can speak to you, you know. And so with that, uh, yeah, God's speaking to me this, and it let me know, hey, everything that people say I told them, that doesn't mean I necessarily told them, you know. So with that. One of the books I read was Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Mm -hmm. Jim Simpla. Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. Jim Simpla. Uh, Tabernacle, the book and Tabernacle, mm -hmm. founder of that. And boy, I tell you, the way that he talked about prayer and getting people in the church, and, yes. you know, I mean, I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing was so powerful. So yes. powerful. It's what I needed to hear. Too. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Good. Mm -hmm. What was it? Fresh wind, fresh, fresh fire. Wind, fresh fire. Fresh Jim, Jim Cimbala. Yeah. Jim Cimbala. Yeah, it's one of Pastor Scott's favorite books. Yeah. Yeah. The Tabernacle Choir. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Let me word hit you. Yeah. What was it about? The word itself. Yeah, the word itself. Uh, yeah. It's Christian literature. I mean, that, yeah. it's about fasting, about prayer, about, I mean, yep. all of that has is, is been tremendously, yep. you know, helpful in my walk. Well, and when, it, when uh, God said that to Habakkuk there, I mean, he was primarily referring to the Bible, but at the same time, that also applies to Christian literature, so it's a double thing. Uh, uh, that, that experience from Renee and I had, um, the, the results of it all are, are in our relationship. Mm -hmm. God was was in it, all of it. Amen. There's nothing you can go 20 years and say he didn't hear our prayer. Amen. Well, uh, I was there, two big men had me in a corner. Mm -hmm. I, I, I pushed them to the side and went over and, and said, Marie, come here and get behind me. And uh, and uh, finally she did. And uh, very, very short. And, and I turned back around and that guy was standing there with his fist. They had to punch. He didn't punch me. They, they took off running. Now, I don't know what happened in that. I know there was, there was a greater source than I was that protected us. Amen, buddy. James? Uh, um, 
God, I, I think um, Joey said it not too long ago that, you know, if you're not careful, like, I can relate anything spiritual. Like, in the Bible, God used, you know, a donkey to speak, you know, a rooster. You know, he'll use whatever he needs to. He even threatened a rock to cry out if you don't. You know what I mean? Like, he can use anything to speak to you. Like, and one time I remember in nature, like, my second day at Teen Challenge, we went to the lake up there, Paint Creek, Paint Creek Lake. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I've ever saw an eagle out in nature like at the lake and i knew like i was where i needed to be like i was right where i needed to be at that moment like it we got to see an eagle nesting up there at that lake it was nice something neat and their nests are huge like i've never seen one they're pretty cool amen yeah uh let me hit you guys up with this last one here uh god speaks to us through teaching uh, such as the amazing teaching that you're sitting under right now, <laughs> at this moment now. Uh, he speaks to us through teaching and discipleship. The last thing that Jesus said was, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you or told you. And so... The things he's told us is in the is in the book, and that's why we teach, and that's why we yes. preach, and that's why we disciple, because in that Christ is able to communicate to you through it. Um, for those who are hungry and have a teachable spirit, I tell you this, uh, old Mark Stevie Joyce. Uh, I what I loved about Mark, Mark, I love Mark to death, and I'm allowed to say this because he was my best friend. Uh, Mark was the most least least and in, in mechanically inclined guy I've ever met. Amen. Oh, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do nothing. Yeah. One time, one time, I put him on a stool that was no no taller than this. It was a little tiny step stool. I think I got it out of the children's restroom, and I had him paint in a corner in the uh, the kids' room. And he stepped up on that thing with a, with a little bucket of paint, and he fell right down and got painted. I was like, "You're done." You know. You're, you're, I was like, "I love you. Go to go to your office. You're fired from painting." You know. And, and this and that. But with that, uh, man, I have never met a hungrier guy in my entire yes. life. No disrespect yes. to anybody yes. in this room. And most of all, I've never met anybody more humble and teachable. He had Amen. a teachable spirit. It didn't matter what I told him to do, Joyce, and a couple times I told him to go get me some lunch. Amen? He did it. It didn't matter. He would do whatever you told him to do for as long as you told him to do it. He had the most teachable spirit I've ever seen. Now, if you, t you got that. Jesus had 12 guys like that, despite all their flaws. Peter's, you know, boldness and... Uh, John and James wanted to call down fire on their enemies, you know? Yeah. It didn't matter. God changed the world with people like Mark Stevie. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Amen. And so because Mark was able to learn from that teaching thing. So with that, I want to close this up. Next week, uh, we're going to hit out the second part of this lesson. We're going to look at secondary ways. But there's just a couple things I want you to know before we, 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 we go tonight. Um, learning to hear the voice of God doesn't happen overnight. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's not an overnight thing, you know, unless you've got some kind of, I don't know, supernatural deal or something where God just touches you, and then you're probably going to end up in this book I got over here, you know, and then <laughs> God told me to do it. But with that, it takes time. It takes time and shared experience. Amen? Yes. Uh, Larry, what is the primary way that people communicate with one another? Body language. Body language. Amen? I could say something to you without saying a single word, but if I go like this, this usually means I'm not open to what you have to say. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa and I can be in a room. We can communicate without communicating. Amen? But that didn't happen overnight. Uh, we can be in a room. She could say something, you know, and uh, give me a look. You know, and I'm like, no, that wasn't me. That was the dog. You know, and, you know or, or what have you. She don't have to say it. She just gives me the look. And I know what yeah. she's saying without her having to say it. Amen? Amen. Because I, I, I know her, and she knows me. And it's the same thing with hearing the voice of God. The more time you spend with somebody, the, the, you're going to know them. You're going to know their preferences without having to stop and pray about it. You're going to hear that voice. Man, uh, we have, uh, in my house, it's my elderly father, my daughter, my wife, me, and the dog, and we've, it, it's a long house, you know, it's a long house, like, kind of a, like a, almost like a 35 or 45 angle, and uh, I can tell you, with my door shut, I can tell you who's opened what door, I can tell you who's walking down the hall, like I said last week, if I can be in a room with my, I can be in the pitch dark, and tell you if that's my dad walking down the hallway, because I usually hear him popping and cracking and this and that, you know, and then me too, and, and this and that, but um, I can, when someone comes in my house, just by the sound of their keys, I know if it's my dad, my wife, or my kid. 
who's come in the front door. And I can be in my room with the door shut. Amen? Because I know the sounds of my house and my home and my family. And so this hearing from God doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen. If you deny yourself, if you persevere in prayer and persevere in the reading of the word, it's going to come in clearer and clearer and clearer, but it doesn't happen overnight. Um, now, these first nine ways that I've shared with you, God speaks to you through Christian literature, teaching discipleship, through other believers, preacher sermons, prayer, and nature and creation. Uh, these are fairly reliable ways. They're also more frequent, too. These are kind of the, the primary ways that God speaks to us outside of the Word, the Holy Spirit, and uh, Jesus Christ. Um, and so these ways are a little bit more reliable than what we're going to be looking at next week, which is what I would call secondary ways of communication. And the reason I say that is because on these secondary ways of communication, uh, we get a little farther away from the Word, and consequently we're more involved in the interpretation process of what God is saying. And anytime we're more involved, it's because it, God's infallible, but we're not. And because of that, it's more susceptible to error. That's not to say it's always going to be with error, but it, it, it can be if you're not careful. So we're looking at ways to hear from God, the many different ways. As you're starting to see here, I hope, and get excited, man. God can speak to you through anything and everything. Amen? Amen. And uh, if he's talking, I don't want to be where it says God speaks in one way and two, though they don't hear it. I don't want to be that guy. Right. And as a man of God... I don't want you all to be that guy or girl. Amen. If God's mm -hmm. talking, I, I want to know. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, let me uh, let me pray for you, and we'll dismiss.